Dubai, with a bold vision and commitment to innovation, Dubai has transformed from a fishing village to a futuristic metropolis. Boasting the world's tallest building, the world's largest man-made island, and even the world's fastest police car. Birthplace of world's ultimate strongman, and now its feats of strength, bringing together the world's strongest to train, compete, and smash records. Whether it's hosting the strongest athletes in the world at the largest race course in the world, or streaming live to millions of homes worldwide, World's Ultimate Strongman is bringing the spirit of Dubai to the sport of strongman. Season one of World's Ultimate Strongman Feats of Strength. Hathor Bjornsson breaks the world record deadlift. Luke Stoltman came so close to breaking the world record log press. Tom Stoltman sets a new Atlas Stone world record. Rhiannon Lovely sets a new female lightweight Atlas Stone world record. Alexei Novikov sets a new giant dumbbell record. Rob Kearney sets a new American log press. Jerry Pritchett and Raul Heinler went head to head in the 400 kilo deadlift. Terry Hollins and Mikhail Shevlikov went head to head for the Masters deadlift record. Andrea Thompson sets a new female log press world record. JF Caron and Adam Bishop went head to head in the 400 kilo deadlift for reps. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the World Ultimate Strongman Feats of Strength Challenge. We have our final episode this week. And my, my current um, co-commentator, Mark Boyd, this time is behind the bar. He's attempting a four times body weight deadlift, 400 kilos, an incredible weight as we've already witnessed this series with the likes of Adam Bishop, J.F. Caron, Jerry Pritchett and Rauner Heindler attempting this, for, this weight for reps. But those guys are the heavyweights. Mark is under, under 100 kilos and he's gonna be attempting 400. Here he is getting weighed earlier today. Weighing in at 99.6 kilograms, 99.4 kilograms. He's dropping weight drastically. And when you consider the guys we've seen are up from 140 to Thor, who was weighing 200 plus kilos, Mark, although compared to a normal person, is still big as a strong man. He's extremely small, but extremely powerful. 400 kilos today, four times body weight. This is going to be an incredible, incredible event. And if he can pull it off, what a way to finish the series. So we can see there, Mark is just getting himself warmed up. I believe there is 260 kilos on the bar right now. And he'll just wanting to be making this feel nice and easy. Straps himself to the bar. Standard weight for Mark. He's going to be looking to make this look like a speed rep. Nice, easy lift. Knees snap back. Hips pulled through. Shoulders back. Very, very comfortable lift. And exactly what he wants. All these warm-ups, it's about creating that confidence that he's got that 400 in him. Easy lift there. Look how fast those knees snap back. Those hips came through. Looking very powerful. Loaders grabbing another 20 kilo plate each. Up the bar to 300 kilos for his next lift. Mark has just gone to get his deadlift suit and he'll be back to pull this 300 kilos shortly.
We started with a can, added 200, no 250, no 300 milligrams of natural caffeine, extracted from plants. Yeah, plants. So you could do this, but not this. Vitamins B3, B6, B12, you're welcome. BCAAs, that just happened. Plus electrolytes, because sweat, and CoQ10, because we had room. And then we made it taste good, without the sugar. Now, go drink it. That's how we made rain, total, body, fuel. We are a community dedicated to those who love fitness and food. We have a mission to show that you can pursue your personal fitness goals and enjoy the process. We are committed to creating a community where you can be and should be proud of your body. No matter what stage of the fitness journey you are on. From fat to fit. Hit them PRs, make them gains, and eat that donut. Join the brand, join the message, join the movement. So first of all, um, I want to say thanks to World's Ultimate Strongman for, uh, you know, having me back on again. They're doing some amazing stuff and really looking forward to seeing what they've got in store next and what's coming up. Um, I've been working with Mark for a few months now, I think. So he came to me and said he wanted to get... Um, you know, a four times body weight deadlift at a hundred kilo weight limit. And um, yeah, we got to work, really got sort of pushing the limits, pushing the boundaries of what we can do. There were, you know, one or two hiccups on the way, a couple of little stumbling blocks to deal with, but we got him through those situations and, you know, he's stronger than he's ever been. He's uh, probably the strongest person at hundred kilos I've ever seen. So. It's a pretty good place to be. I um, think, you know, dealing with training out in Dubai during this sort of COVID lockdown as well, he's had a lot of issues to deal with, you know, in terms of logistics. And the main thing is he's just kept hammering through his training, making loads and loads of progress and, you know, really pushing the limits of what's possible as a deadlifter, especially um, within a weight class. We've done a lot of low block work to sort of help with his speed off the floor um a lot of upper back work to help him you know stay solid so he can get his glutes through to lock out and you know it's he's in a great place really good lifter really good attitude to training uh fairly early on into the process i said um you know i'd be a lot more comfortable if he was working with nathan payton on a project like this nathan really knows what's going on he knows you know, how to get the best out of people, how to make them feel good going into sessions. So I set some really big goals, some sort of stretch targets for him to hit. And with Nathan on board, he's going into the gym feeling amazing. It's been absolutely smashing his recovery. Um, you know, built hot tubs and cold tubs you'll have, you'll have seen on his YouTube channel. And it's just got himself in a great position, give himself the best opportunity to do something really special. Um, Mark's a phenomenal athlete and as well as that, he's doing amazing things for the sport with the other guys at WUS and it's just really good to see. It's really nice to see people who actually care and, you know, want the best for the athletes, want to get people involved and want to keep pushing the sport forward um, in as many ways as possible instead of just, you know, doing the same old thing over and over again. They're looking after the athletes and making everyone involved feel like they're part of the process. So... Really looking forward to seeing what he can do. We've got a massive deadlift. He's done all the work. So let's see what he can do and, you know, build on to the next one. Start chasing some bigger records down. And welcome back to the World Ultimate Strongman Feats of Strength Challenge. Mark is just getting into his deadlift suit over there. The suit provides a lot of stability around the hips. It also helps a little with extra power off the floor. They're very, very tight, uncomfortable to get into. You can see there, he's um, 
He's struggling to get his legs into the super suit. He's got Velcro straps, which makes it a little bit easier. Some of them don't have the, the, the Velcro straps. You, you just have the, the normal straps, and they can be extremely hard to get into. It normally takes a, a real team to get you into them. You can see there, if he's a little bit sweaty, it sticks to you. They have to really work themselves into these. But it does provide that little bit of extra power out of the floor when you're deadlifting. I actually hate deadlift suits. Just the hassle of getting into them. I'd like to see them banned from Strongman. But they're allowed, so the guys definitely use them. You need to make sure they have every bit of kit that they can. He's got the figure of eight straps. He's got the deadlift. He's got the big thick belt. All these little things are important to lift maximum poundage. I'm not sure if he's praying there or just trying to cool himself down. It is extremely hot right now. It's ice pack, keeping himself cool. We're having a nice day in the UK right now. It's about 25 degrees. I think over in Dubai, it's, it's around the f high 40s, low 50s at the moment. The humidity and the heat is, is a factor when you're trying to lift these weights. But hopefully he's in a nice air-conditioned room and staying as hydrated as possible. He's just asking for some help to get him into the suit. And who better to be your helper than the awesome Larry Wheels. So Larry and Mark train together over in Dubai. Another great deadlifter. Maybe we can see him competing in some strongman events in the not too distant future. I just noticed Adrunas has popped up and I don't know what he's checking out, but he's always looking for every little trick that anyone's trying to pull. So Adrunas doesn't let anything slip by. So Mark is finally happy with the suit. The T-shirt's going to go on top. And I believe his next pull will be 300 kilos. Still warming up, but 300 kilos is a seriously large weight. He's got his Emirates strength belt going on. It's a good strongman trick there or powerlifting trick using the bars to, to really ratchet that belt up as tight as possible he wants to make sure when he's lifting he's bracing as hard as he can into the belt the the way i try and explain it to people is to imagine you're like a coke can expanding in every single direction okay take your position so this is still a warm-up lift but he wants to get the commands from zadrinus just so he's comfortable with all the calls Ready, lift. Good lift. And another excellent lift there by Mark. And it's, it's good to get those practice lifts in, because even with that, you see Zadrunas makes them hold it at the top for much longer than people would think. It's not like your, your normal gym lifts where you just pull it to lock out and then put it straight down. He's always making these guys hold these lockouts, whether it's deadlifts, log lifts, so good four, five, six seconds there. He was holding it at the top. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. I tell you what, this has been fun. This is one of the first times that I've had a deadline where it's basically from zero to 100 in, in, in the matter of six weeks. So that has been very rewarding in order to watch that process and kind of put some of my principles to use. Keep in mind with me, the main thing that I'm trying to do when you're talking about a one-off kind of an experience like this is to generate as much power, as much strength through generating as much torque as humanly possible in order for a, something like this that's four times Mark's body weight to occur. So for us to even have a chance at this today, it's got to be massive amounts of power and strength in an instant when he goes to fire and come up. And from there, we play it out. With Mark's diet, of course, there was duck fat in there. Everybody's going to ask me about that. Um, but it was mostly a clean type of diet, a little bit cleaner than most. But that's because I had to leave room in order to manipulate 
all the cheat meals that were necessary to kind of consistently manipulate his insulin levels because I'm trying to retain maximum insulin sensitivity, but also pound him with additional nutrients to stay above for his recovery needs. Definitely the most challenging aspect of this prep has been just that, has been the recovery needs, has been able to feed Mark through speaking with him several times daily in making sure that not only the training session that just took place was handled, but in knowing what's expected with Dan's training plan for him for the next session. So I have to basically ensure that I can recover him oftentimes in 24 to 48 hours at the most and then have him kind of overcompensated so that he's got that additional strength resource available for him for the next session. Because again, you just don't have any time or margin for error to have a lagging recovery because basically that wrecked the entire thing. If he hits an issue where he's overtrained or his body is not recovering due to that, it's over because I mean, you're talking two weeks minimum to bounce from that. And with six weeks, we just didn't have it. So literally for us to pull this off, both Dan and myself had to have everything kind of go perfectly in six weeks without a setback. And he did have that lat tear that I think he had posted a while back. And even at that, his recovery was lightning fast. He just missed a few days and he was right back at it. And it really didn't hinder things too much. With this, type of a, with this type of a prep, it's just interesting because I have to focus on so many areas at once. There's endurance, but the endurance is not a typical way that I would focus on it. Typically with a strongman contest or like my NFL guys, endurance is so paramount, but it's endurance for the day. But in Mark's case, I have to approach it completely different, whereas I'm, I'm viewing it from an endurance standpoint for the week meaning I'm always having to be two or three steps ahead of wherever we are. And that's looking at Dan's training, that's talking to Mark, and that's understanding where we are at this point of the week, where we've got to be by the end of the week, and then what's coming up right behind it for the next week. Again, because there's just no downtime in this. Well, I've, I've spoken with Mark and Don both in the past, you know, with my extreme interest in coming over to Dubai and kind of immersing myself in that culture and being involved in their growth of strongman and just in the general UAE as far as what they're trying to accomplish because I think there's a resource for my services as it comes to athletes over there and I think it's very unknown. Nutrition in various parts of the world is just something that's misunderstood or not understood. People really think it's pick something up and put it down and they don't understand that when you're trying to go for high level or records or be a top level pro at a sport like this, nutrition is going to govern almost all of your results and how far you're able to take it. Training is your stimulus, you know, and that's one, two hours out of your day. And the remaining 22 hours of the day is all based around your nutrition, what you're putting in your body, your supplementation, and then how that pans out over the course of a week. So there's a whole medical factor, if you will, that goes along with this. I have big hopes for Mark today. Um, with what he has pulled, what I've seen in training and where we are, I know for a fact he's going to have massive amounts of power <laughs> available to him when he goes to pull. So I'm looking for good speed off the floor. And I feel it's going to be very explosive. And I feel that alone is going to rock people's socks because they're going to see a four times body weight rocket off the floor, which is just... It, you know, it kind of defies logic. So, but that's, that's where we're at. And in order to have a good chance on this record, that's what we've got to have is maximum explosiveness, power, and strength, shooting off the floor to carry through the lift. And then we'll see how it pans out. Mark has been a fun athlete. Like I said, this has been a very enjoyable experience for me just because it's got the newness to it. It's kind of like a constant science experiment from day to day. Um, and kind of being able to use my different principles and put them to good use and see how fast and quickly the results were there for Mark from day to day, or if he would mention something that he didn't feel was quite right or seemed a little bit off, and then making a couple of adjustments, and then the next training session, <laughs> kind of seeing his excitement about being blown away with how things felt with just my tweaking or moving certain things around. So definitely a great time. So Mark's a great athlete. I look for much more. Um, this is probably just the beginning of the 
of the records and the beginning of the accomplishments, if you will, that Mark's going to knock out. So definitely looking forward to the future. I hope there's many more of these opportunities available as well in working with Mark. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. Welcome back, guys. Mark is still preparing for his big attempt. He's attempting 360 kilos as his final warm-up lift. Now, his intro level nutritionist that Mark has been working with recently. He's taken on a coach. He's taken on nutritionists. It really shows the dedication that the top athletes do these days. Back when I was starting out, we, we sort of just focused on our training and, and you know, there, there was there was focus on nutrition, but not to the scientific level that the, the top guys are going to now. Strongman is an evol uh, evolving sport. It keeps getting better and better. The athletes keep getting better and better. The lifts keep improving. Uh, Mark is, is lifting what was once 10 kilos away from the Strongman world record, almost just... 10, 15 years ago, I, I remember back when I was in my prime, let's say, I, uh, I broke the deadlift record. It was set at 210 kilos and myself and Brian Shaw managed to take it to 200, uh, sorry, 430 kilos. That was back in 2010. And I was around 155 kilos. Brian Shaw was around the 200 kilos mark. This is not, uh, mark this is, not is 100 kilos and he's attempting to lift almost as much as we were back then. Really just shows the, the improvement all across the sport. The open level world record is now at 501, which is scary to think we have two guys that have gone over 500. And I can promise you there's, there's elite level guys that have failed 400 kilos in contest. This is a massive weight. I think we've we've spoilt people too much to to make them think 400 is easy. Anyway, let's see how 360 kilos is looking. So Drunas is looking on. Mark is strapped in. Here we go. It's nice and compact. We drive hard through the heels. Pulls the guy through. Locks the knees back. Good solid lift. Looks happy with that. And you see, after every attempt, he wants to get out of that suit. It's so tight, it's restricting their breathing. You want to get in, perform your lift, pull as fast and as aggressively as possible. Look at the veins bursting out of his head there. He's making it look easy, but it just shows the stress that's going through his body. And at 100 kilos, he doesn't have the mass of the big boys that can really handle these weights. This is it's an incredible lift for such a light body weight. Uh -huh. My name is Mark Boyd. I'm 26 years old from Scotland. Previously a Royal Marines Commando where I joined when I was 16 years old for six years before I then came to Dubai. When I came to Dubai, I wanted to bring the sport of strongman to the region, building up the sport locally from competitions to strongman equipment to training. I always believed that strongman training could be utilized in sports as a great training tool for functional strength and conditioning and something that can be of great benefit to the general population using the primal functional movements with the not so monstrous weights that the guys are using today. That then led on to wanting to grow the sport and expose the sport within the Middle East and all around the globe where myself and my business partner came up with the wild concept of world's ultimate strongman, where we'd be focusing on growing the sport, but by doing it, treating the athletes fairly, paying them well, and trying to grow the sport from the grassroots up. Well, sh showing truly what a spectacle strongman can be. During the concept building phase, I wanted to dig my roots in as an athlete prior to taking the plunge with the world's ultimate strongman concept to sort of earn the respect within the game and amongst the strongman athletes themselves where in 2018 I won Britain's and Scotland's strongest man under 105 kilos and broke the world record deadlift at the time for the weight class. 
We then put together two fantastic shows in 2018 and 2019 where we kind of made our, our, our mark within the Strongman game, gaining the athletes' trust and the spectators back home. Going forward with World's Ultimate Strongman, we aim to put the sport of strongman on the mainstream where it's rightfully deserved to be and give the athletes and the fans back home what they deserve. My biggest inspiration in life would be my papa who sadly passed away last year. Not that this should be a sob story, but I always felt that when someone passes that you adored and, and you looked up to, if there was a way you could take a piece of them, their good traits that you can carry on in your life, they will always live through you and be a part of you. My papa definitely being a man's man, a grafter and a family man and always put his heart and soul into everything he laid his hands upon. So what my papa and being a commando taught me and something that maybe you guys can sort of take on back home is whatever you put your mind to, whatever you put your hand to, if you do it with all your might and you believe you can achieve. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the World Ultimate Strongman Feats of Strength record series. We are now weighing the plates for Mark's attempt okay, at 400 kilos. We're just going to stack the weights all on top of each other. So Drunus is happy with that. So we can see clearly today, we've got a lovely assistant there holding the weight scales for us. The loaders are all putting the weights on for us to see. 120. Is Adrunas going to let those for a few grams go? He's usually extremely strict. 160. Look at these Alico plates. Almost every plate is bang on 20 kilos. 180. 200. 220. Is Adrunas just counting them on? 240. There's no argument today about the way every single plate is calibrated. Later. Well, I'll have to wait and see if Sidrunus is going to be happy about those two grams that are, are missing. I've seen in the past weeks, he's actually made lifters add half kilo plates, collars, to make sure the weight is bang on what it should be. Here come the tens. Seventy. Eighty. Yeah, yeah. Nice. They're going to balance this on top? They are. Three hundred and ninety-nine uh, point six. Four hundred missing. Four hundred grams. <laughs> and do you have the, the this? So Zadrunas is just saying that four grams are missing and he's making them add some light collars. There okay, we go. 400. 400 kilos bang on. Zadrunas is happy. The loaders will set the weights back on the bar and Mark will have his attempt at a four times yeah, body well, weight yes, deadlift. With every single episode, we've had brilliant teams working around the athletes. No exception today. Mark has just sat there. He's got his headphones in. Mark, I've spoken with him before. He likes to really zone out. He likes to get focused, sit in a corner, get his aggression going, and just focus on the job at hand. And so many lifters are different. Some guys really like to just keep, keep themselves focused. Some of them have a towel over their head. I, I always like being a little bit more laid back, joking about, and then five, ten minutes before, then it was time to switch on. Just got a little 
view of his face there. You can see he's focused. He's not even looking around. He's here to do a job. 400 kilos is what he wants. Will he get it? So I think we're up to 140. It's 180 going on now. So much easier when they use 20 kilo plates to figure everything out. I'm a 20 kilo plate man. These 25s and other things, it gets confusing. Three hundred kilos is always a, a huge weight. I think if anyone can achieve a three hundred kilo deadlift, that's something to be proud of. Four hundred kilos is world class. I think that's three forty on the bar now. The loaders are sweating in the heat. And Mark's still just focusing on the job at hand, trying to save as much energy as possible. Keeping his head focused. He's just had a little peer at the weights there. Sometimes I think it's best not to even look at the weights. When you're, when you're going for those record attempts, you just focus on the little area where you focus on your lifting. Don't look at the weights. Sometimes they can intimidate you. I always found when it was competition time, the best thing to do is just channel my, my focus. Look at that small area where you're going to actually grab onto the bar. Don't worry about what's on the bar. Focus on the lifting. Focus on your technique. interesting watching Mark from a different perspective this week. Usually he's here with me commentating. We're watching the other athletes. I'm a little bit nervous for him today. I'm talking to his coaches and his nutritionists and they feel he's ready for this. Training's gone well. He went up to 370 in training. And I'll be honest, the 370 didn't fly up. You know, he, he wasn't making it look like a speed rep, that's for sure. But has the, well, if the adrenaline kicks in today, he's peaked right, we should see 400 kilos come up. Just visualizing what he needs to do. Look at that, he's trying to measure out the perfect stance. Real professional. Headphone, headphones have come out. Oh no, they're going back in. <laughs> I think he just said he wants a couple more minutes before he attempts this weight. We'll have Larry or some of the other spotters will be there helping him get back into the suit. And then we'll see what this wee Scottish man can do. I mean, uh, the biggest strong men like myself, we, we sort of joke about pretend these these under 105s are small but they're really not small men they're stacked with muscle fantastic athletes and obviously extremely strong larry again just making sure everything's set right he'll have been practicing in the suit making sure he gets the most out of it he knows how he wants it set up pulling down hard to really get it on as tight as possible Larry will then pull the other strap back the other way. The Velcro will attach. There we go. Mark's happy. Look how tight that suit is around his legs. You're just digging in there. They're not comfortable to wear, I'll be totally honest with you. They're really not. He just wants as much tension through his body as possible. The belt gets ratcheted up again.
And the suit's okay for, for one rep. You, the, the breathing issue that I spoke about earlier, it doesn't affect you too much with the one rep. We've seen some of the guys when it, they're going for the deadlift for reps, you just can't recover when that, that oxygen is depleted. You can't quite get as much air in with your breathing. But for one rep, the suits work really, really well. It's quite interesting as well. People often wonder how much a suit can help. And it completely varies athlete to athlete. There's some guys that can get a good 30 to 40 kilos out of them and other lifters that really struggle to get anything. So it's, it's, it's about mastering the suit. But um, the deadlift suit, if you're really practicing it well and if you're weaker off the floor, then it'll give you a lot more. If your weakness is at the lockout, it tends not to give you as much. Here we go. Mark's getting himself psyched up. So 400 kilos. He tells the yeah, journalist he's ready. Position. Let's go, Mark. Come on. Gets himself strapped in. He needs to give every bit of energy he's got into this movement. He needs to be explosive. Lift. Aggressive through the floor. Drive through those heels into the floor. He needs that bar over the knees to then lock out, pulling those hips through. Let's go, Mark. Come on. And it's coming up. It's coming. Come on. Pull it. Pull through. Pull those hips through. Come on. Oh. He was so close. He couldn't quite get the hips through. Zadrunas' hand wouldn't go down. Zadrunas looking on. It's great off the floor. Got stuck just above the knees. And he couldn't quite pull those hips through to finish the rep off. Just shouting, he wants to get some talcum powder. And that's a schoolboy error, really, to, to avoid putting it on beforehand. It's a huge weight. Look how close he was. I've seen many, many gym lifts claim reps like that. It was the right call. It certainly wasn't locked out. But look how close he gets. 400 kilos. The bar's bending. It's over the knees. He tried to hitch it up. Just lost his balance. Stumble backwards, just trying to finish off. Oh, you can see the knee turns out. Luckily, he still stood up. We are a community dedicated to those who love fitness and food. We have a mission to show that you can pursue your personal fitness goals and enjoy the process. We are committed to creating a community where you can be and should be proud of your body. No matter what stage of the fitness journey you are on. From fat to fit. Hit them PRs, make them gains, and eat that donut. Join the brand, join the message, join the movement.
And welcome back, everyone. Obviously, we've just seen Mark get so close with the 400 kilos attempt. Couldn't quite lock it out. He's got another attempt. He's asked for the talcum powder to be brought over. And to be quite honest, this should have gone on for the first attempt. I think if he, if he had this for the first attempt, it would have just made the, the surface of the legs just that little bit smoother to really pull the bar and lock out just a little bit easier. It's a, a trick many powerlifters and strong men use. They're just doing it out in the corner so that the flooring doesn't get affected. This is the thing with talc. As good as it is on the legs, you do not want it touching your hands when you're about to deadlift. Even with the straps, it just it makes your hands feel slippy. So you need someone else putting it on for them. <laughs> it looks a bit strange, but it's there just for performance purposes only. He's going to go with his... He's just getting it on the quads. How close was that 400, though? And how much energy has it taken out of him? It's very, very rare we see someone come back a second time. But he was so close with that attempt. Can he recover? And will the talc make enough of a difference? He looked powerful off the floor. It was the lockout where he struggled a little bit more. <laughs> I was just thinking that myself. He says, this is not a good shot. <laughs> the things you do for your friends. <laughs> he looks happy. <laughs> you can, if, you, if you don't know what's going on, it, it can look a bit dodgy. But he is, I can assure you, just trying to make sure that the legs are as smooth as possible. So there's as little friction as possible on the bar when he's pulling it against the thighs. So Larry's coming over again to get him strapped in. Just want to say a massive thank you to all the sponsors, Rain, Rogue, SBD, Kind of Fit, Kind of Fat Apparel. Without these companies, we wouldn't be able to put these events on. It's really been an incredible series. We've seen so many incredible feats of strength by the various different athletes. Records broken. Strong, huge lifts to entertain all the fans and myself. I, I loved watching every minute of these and being a part of them. So thank you to everyone that supported us. Watched the shows, commented afterwards. It's given us all something to enjoy during this quite terrible situation that we've had in the world recently. So I hope you've all enjoyed it. There is rumors of things happening again. I can't promise too much right now. There's things in the pipeline, but we may be back with some strength action in the not too distant future. But before then, we have Mark Boyd. His second attempt, he got so close on the first. But his second attempt at 400 kilos now. Has he recovered enough? Will the talc make enough of a difference? Come on then, Mark. Time to switch on. So, the spotter's just getting the bar perfectly set. Mark choosing the figure of eight straps. He's going to have a sniff of the ammonium. Again, that just clears the head. It's perfectly fine to use. It kind of really clears your nose. It wakes you up, let's say. If you've never tried it before, it's worth trying. Don't get too close to it. It really can blow your head off. <laughs> Right, he's going to unleash that position. aggression. Zadrinus so gives him the command to strap onto the bar. Here we go. Come on, Mark. Every ounce of energy you've got into this. Lift. Here we go. Come on. Up, 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 up. Yes, come on. Pull. Pull. Ah. 
Another fantastic effort there. Came off the floor exceptionally well. Over the knees, just couldn't quite lock out. Didn't quite have the glute strength to pull the hips through and finish the pull. Again, he tried to push the knees forward to, to hitch it up. Such an incredible effort. Only six weeks to prepare for this event. But it shows you how heavy 400 kilos is. It shows you how impressive the likes of Raunel Heindler, Thor Bjornsson, you know, Adam Bishop, J.F. Caron, those guys that are repping out. Jerry Pritchett, repping 400 kilos. Mark is an incredibly strong man. Very close. He got close. Even Zadrunas just tells him how close he got. But it just really brings into perspective some of the incredible feats of strength we've already seen this series. Mark getting a round of applause. Look how close he gets. He's coming over the knees. Just couldn't quite finish the rep off. A valiant effort there. And just as he pushed the knees forwards, he knew it wasn't coming up. I think, I think maybe if he had the talk first time round, he maybe, maybe could have just locked that out. It was a fantastic effort. Look at the veins bursting in his arms, in his head, the effort going through his body. Absolutely incredible. Mate, so, so close. A little taste of your own medicine there in front of the massive live virtual fans. How does it feel? Uh, it's a little bit gutting, but as you say, taste of my own medicine. Um, but I'm a big believer in practicing what you preach. And uh, today I sort of tried to put a show on and sort of... was a show, yeah. Uh, I'm a bit unfortunate. Um, something that I can take away and work on, but... Overall, I'm happy I did it. Um, yeah. As I said, practice what I preach. Yeah, your own feet of strength, and again, unlucky. So what's next for you? Personally, are you, are you tempted again? Well, from seeing the flow speed of this, I definitely yeah. feel a little bit of work to be done on the lockout, and the world record for the under 105s is definitely achievable. Um, having done the 400 kilo deadlift for two reps, essentially off the floor, yeah. And with this quite a consistent speed, I think. Yeah, a little bit. So it was practice. Yeah, yeah. It, was it was only practice. practice really. <laughs> so you've got any words out there? Thank you to all the fans. Any words for the fans, aspiring strong men? Edge, up to you. It's a state of mind. Anything you do, it's all in the head. You need to put your head to it. And uh, if you believe, you can achieve. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Um, Mark there, obviously disappointed he didn't get the lift, but he's sounding positive. He believes in himself. He believes he can get that under 105 world record. He believes he can pull that four times body weight. Paul, who wants to see him back next year? I, I certainly do, but I'd be happy to have him back in the commentary with me. Maybe even a commentator versus commentator event that we can hook up in the future. Everybody, thank you so much for joining us for this series. It's been an absolute pleasure from everyone as part of the World Ultimate Strongman team. We thank you all and we will see you guys soon.